Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina, everybody. Today, I am joined by Matt, who is a producer amongst a ton of other titles. So how are you doing? I am great. I'm great. It's good to be here. All right. I want you to talk to me a little bit about your career and what you do. Producer, um, musician, um, singer, uh, artist. Um, just love doing music. Been doing it for a while. Recording engineer. Well, I know that you have a term that you've coined called mixed producer. Can you kind of mm -hmm. break that down for me? Yeah. So what uh, producer actually started out um, in music, it kind of it started out as the person who pretty much directs the song. And so, um, you know, back in the days, like, you know, in the 80s, 90s, you know, uh, Teddy Riley or Barry Gordy or someone or Puffy would produce a record and they didn't necessarily play, or uh, like Ted, uh, Puffy wouldn't necessarily play anything. He would just direct the song, put that snare there. That sounds really great and I'll approve it. Then Teddy Riley kind of came along and kind of did everything himself. Like he did all the music, he directed everything, got everything together. Uh, and then now it's kind of, it's kind of evolved to the producer kind of just does the beat. Well, that isn't really what a producer does. Uh, and so the mixed producer kind of puts more of a, a context for uh, the engineer. A lot of times now the engineer is the one who is kind of putting all the effects and making producer decisions. Um, and, let's, let's, and they're talking to the, to the artist because the person who did the beat sent the beat. The artist did what they did on it, sing, rap, what have you. And then they're coming into the studio and now the song still needs coaching. It still needs massaging. So usually the engineer is the one who does it. So now you call the engineer the producer, but they don't necessarily get credit for doing the things that they're doing. You know what I mean? And so what what, what mixed engineer, what mixed producer does is kind of give language to what's actually happening because I'm changing songs, changing the adding, even to the point where adding more instrumentation with the instrumentation that's there, like adding more, putting more snares here, or putting a break here, changing the entire sound of this part, you know, making decisions that are producers decisions that if you didn't know the engineer did that, you would be like, oh, the producer's great. You know what I mean? But producers just put a kind of a boom tap. They did their thing. They put the foundation on, but the finishing product was really, really cr created by the by the engineer. So. And that's what makes it sound really good in the end, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk I love about cool the highlights of your career. Obviously, you won a Grammy. You've worked with some very notable artists before. But, but yeah. tell me some highlights. Uh, again, it's hard for me to talk about stuff. I literally have people that have known me for like 15 years. And, you know, they're just finding out that I have a Grammy. So I'm the guy, literally, yeah. I don't, I, I'm the guy who who wins the award but doesn't come. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. So it's, <laughs> I'd rather be, I'd rather, I, I, I sit in, I sit in a lot of, a lot of um, sessions and they're like, man, you have a Grammy, you know, you got a song with Ashanti, you got a song with this person, that person. And I'll be like, okay, that's cool, but can we work? Like, what are we gonna do? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, let's see, I worked with Ashanti, got a song with, um, got a song with Tyrese, and did a did a song with um, Aaron Hall and, and Biggie Smalls, and just done some work with some people, um, traveled a couple of places and worked with a lot of, a lot of dream people, but you know, it's cool. I'm sure you have a million stories, but what are you working on right now? Now I've relocated from, I used to be, my main base was um, Richmond, Virginia. And so now I've moved to California. So kind of relocating and kind of getting things. I'm in Sacramento. Um, I'm really, really working on establishing a second location for the studio that we had in Richmond. So we're kind of expanding. Uh, it was a spot recording studio in Richmond, Virginia. Go check them out. Longest Urban Studio, the best in DMV.
We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. This story is sponsored by Portofino Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar. Welcome to Portofino. Benvenuti a Portofino. My name is Giovanni with my wife Ilma. I am the owner and one of the chefs at this new restaurant. Our cooking style is from the north of Italy, from Tuscany, where I am from, and from Liguria, where the small city of Portofino is located. Portofino was a fisherman place and became a very fancy location in Italy with beautiful buildings, beautiful color and great food. This vibe and this class is what we use to inspire the facade of our building. When it comes to our food, that's the core value of our mission, is to give you all a true taste of Italy. As Italian, I have cooked and eaten Italian food in Italy all my life. So it is a pleasure for me and for my staff to reproduce for you all those authentic flavors. We start from fresh ingredients that we source daily from local producers, and the food is cooked for you at the time of order from scratch. As a customer, please enjoy this experience. This is not just about eating great food, is about having an experience like if you were traveling in Italy. And I can assure that many of our dishes are the same that you would taste if you travel to Italy, except you don't need to travel to have this great experience. We do have a very large bar where we are able to prepare any cocktails that you may know of, and maybe some you never had, which are Italian cocktails. Our bartender Don preparing for you an Aperol Spritz, which is the most famous Italian drink in Italy in the last 10 years. It's just an aperitif. We have a wide selection of wines, international wines from California, of course, great wines like Camus, or Silver Oak, but we do have a great selection of exclusive Italian wines from all the regions in Italy, so you will, you will certainly enjoy. I can only tell you all, please come dine with us. You will be our guest for the, the dinner of your life. This story is sponsored by Portofino Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina. Day. I mean, come on, what a treat. I am at Isn't the Art it? Museum of Myrtle Beach. How are you doing, Patricia? Oh, I couldn't be better. Thank you for being here. So you are the executive director here. I am, yes. Do you know quite a bit about art? I know quite a bit about this museum. Mm, okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't um, say that I know everything about art, but I certainly know about this museum and what we feature. And I'm delighted to feature the Rhodes Collection of African, Amer African American art, the Rhodes Collection of African American art in this exhibition entitled Lifting Black Voices. I mean, we just we just took a little walk around and it's breathtaking. It is breathtaking. Least. I mean, you have Philip Simmons, Jonathan Green, just right. really, really awesome. We have 80 works by 30 different artists, all collected by Dr. and Mrs. Rhodes who uh, have a dental practice in Walterboro and live in Charleston, South Carolina. They have been collecting since 1991. And this is just a small portion of their collection. Wait, and weren't we lucky to get these 80 pieces? Oh my goodness. Yes, and I mean, we have names like Jonathan Green and Philip Simmons, Tyrone Jeter, Ariane Kingcomer and Leo Twiggs who do boutiques. Um, we have sculpture and yeah. yeah, woodwork and ironwork and oils and pastels. I mean, collages, James Denmark collages. So it just tells such a wonderful story. Mainly, all of these artists have ties to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all were born here, taught here, lived here, created here. So this is really a homage to South Carolina and the art uh, of past and present.
We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. Welcome back to Living Local Carolina. I'm Katie Turner, and boy, do we have something going on in the studio today. I'm joined by Wade Johnson, the director of bands at Benedict College. How are you? I am fabulous, Ms. Turner. Thank you for having me. Now, yes. okay, we need to talk about a very specific way that you can perform that not everybody can do. You can actually play two instruments at the same time. Oh, yes. Frank Motley from Busy Gillespie's band. Um, the precursor was this, Joey Morant, the late Joey Morant from Charleston, South Carolina. He had a trumpet that had two bells on it, uh -huh. but one lead pipe. And when I saw him as a kid doing that, I was like, oh my God. I didn't know that was just one horn. Uh -huh. So moving forward to um, late, late 70s, early 80s, I got to meet Mr. Gillespie and saw his big band. Frank Motley was one of his trumpet players on his big band. Frank Motley actually did it with two trumpets. Uh -huh. And I lost my mind. Uh -huh. I walked up to him, Mr. Motley, oh, oh that, was, that was awesome. That was he said, son, you want to learn how to do this? And I, I, I almost had a heart attack, and stuff, but still, with Mr. Motley, I said, yes, sir. You know, in a small town country boy, I said, that would be something great to learn how to do. So he sat me down. He told me the logistics behind it. And, and scientifically, guys, the only way to do this, there are about three of us in the country, in the world, that can do it. But you have to use both sides of your brain simultaneously. <laughs> because you know we have like cognitive skills, uh, mm -hmm. one skill, right side, left side. We only do it once, once in a But it took me seven years, seven years to master it to the point where people could understand what I was playing. Mm -hmm. And that I remember the first gig that I did in 1981. I'll never forget it. I was at a VFW in 1981, and, and, and I decided to try it. And the, the place was packed. And I mean, when I did it, the, everybody stopped, and they were shocked at first. And I did it. And after I put my horns down, the place erupted. Oh, I, I believe so it. So that pinpointed up a part in my life. Everybody say, do you know H. Wade Johnson? Hey, that's the guy that played the two horns at the same time. So that, that developed through that. And when I tell you, Ms. Turner, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. It's history. And it's, it's a calling card for me now. Yeah. And if I perform, when I perform at different places and the people who know me, if I don't do it, then they get fussed at. Oh. Yeah, so they go like, you will not end your show until you do a double horn solo. <laughs> I love it. But I, I, I love it too, and, and just putting it together was very, very difficult. But I love the fact that it's a gift. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, it's a gift. And I do it uh, secondhand. Easy. It's easy for me now. That's so cool. Yes, yes. And I understand you're a trumpet player. He was, he was a trumpet player. He was, he was a player. In Columbia, yes, he was yeah. a trumpet Yeah, because I know some of the people that he know and uh, some of the school. Mm -hmm. He worked. Um, I played the flute. Yes. Awesome. See, so you brought your flute? I did not bring my flute. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Next time. I Next didn't want to get show it up now. We'll do, we'll do a trio. How mm -hmm. about instead of a duet? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Next course. time. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. How to use the QR code. Just open the camera app on your smartphone, iPad, or tablet. Point your device at the QR code so the QR code appears on your screen. Your device will recognize the QR code and show you a notification. Click that notification and you'll come to our website.
Living Local Carolina, weekday mornings at 9.30 on WBTW News 13.